In this lecture video, we will talk about different concepts regarding links and associations. Links and associations are the means for establishing relationships among objects as well as classes. So let's define each of these. A link is a physical or conceptual connection among objects. For example, I can have a link named John Smith works for Simplex Company. So if you look at the statement, John Smith and Simplex Company are two objects. John Smith may be a person, Simplex Company may be a company. John Smith works for Simplex Company. So you can see what is the connection between John Smith and Simplex Company? The term works for. So works for is nothing but a link connecting John Smith to Simplex Company. Most links relate to objects. Some links can also relate three or more objects. A link is always an instance of an association. Now let's took a, take a look at what an association is. An association is a description of a group of links with common structure and common semantics. For example, a person works for a company, very generic terms. A person could be John Smith, she could be Mary Smith, and so on. So a person is nothing but a class, and a company is another class. So if you want to connect two classes, the connection you use between them is called as an association. The links of an association connect objects from the same classes. An association, on the other hand, describes a set of potential links in the same way that a class describes a set of potential objects. Let's look at it this way. We have studied classes and objects. What was a class? A class was just a template, a generic template or form using which you created very specific objects by giving actual values to attributes, defining the actual behavior which was stated in the class template. In the same way, association is a template. Using this association template, you can create specific connections called as links. So as associations are to classes, links are to objects. So when you connect two classes, the connection between them is called as an association. But when you create objects for these classes, and then you try to connect the objects of these two classes, then that connection is called as a link. Let's look at the UML notation and a few examples to make these concepts clear. Let's start with this class diagram. So this diagram here on the right side of the slide shows you, an, uh, you know, a model for a financial application. Stock brokerage firms need to perform certain tasks such as recording ownership of stocks, tracking dividends, alerting customers to market changes, computing margin requirements, and so on. So at the top, you can see there is a class diagram for the association. And at the bottom, what we have is an object diagram depicting links. So let me talk about these diagrams in detail first. You can see person is a class. So I, how did you identify that person is a class? Just look at the UML notation. We have already learned that a class is represented by a box with the first compartment of the box stating the name of the class here. The name of the class is person. The second compartment of the box stating the attributes or properties. So here it has only one attribute for simplicity. That is the name. Company is another class depicted here. So if I want to connect these two classes, I just draw a line between them. And this line is called as an association. An association could have a name, all right? And whenever you have names for the associations, they are either optional, that is you may or may not write them at all. And if you have them, you write them as italicized names. So you can see person class is connected to company class by the named association owns stock and it is represented by a line connecting these two classes. Now, let me create objects for the person class. So how do I write objects? 
I use object diagrams. So when I write object diagrams, again, represented as a box, the first compartment of the box will be the name of the specific object followed by a colon, followed by the name of the class for which you have created the object. So here, John is an object of the person class. Mary is an object of the person class. Sue is an object of the person class. Alice is an object of the person class. And Jeff is also an object for the person class. Now, when I write objects, the second compartment will be attributes, and these will have the actual names for the attributes. If you look at the person class, this is the template, and it says the only attribute listed here is name. So when I create objects for the person class, in the second compartment, I'm actually going to write names or values for these attributes. So name is equal to John. This is the representation or the UML notation. Write the name of the attribute, followed by equal to sign and give the actual value of this attribute. Similarly, for this name is Mary, name is Sue, name is Alice, name is Jeff and so on. So we have already, you know, studied these notations in our previous lecture videos. Now let me create more objects for the company class. So here I'm going to create the first object for the company class and the name of this object is GE. So I write the name of the object or the representation or the identity of the object followed by the colon, followed by the class name for which this object was created. Similarly, I create another IBM object for the company class. Again, company has one attribute that is the name. So when I create the object and the object diagram in the second compartment, I write the same attribute write the equal to and write the actual value for this attribute. For the GE company, the value is GE. For the IBM company, the value is IBM. So this is about class diagrams and object diagrams. So here you can see association is represented as own stock between these two classes. That means I can have objects of this class and I can have objects of this class and I can connect them. So see the connection here. The John object is connected to the GE company object. Mary object is connected to the GE object. Sue object of the person class is connected to the GE object of the company class. So when I show this connection and when I'm showing connection between objects, what I call this connection is a link. When I connect two classes, the connection is called as an association, but when I create objects for those two classes which are connected by an association already and then when I specifically connect them then when what I call the connection is a link so if you carefully observe this diagram owns stock let me read this for you a person can own stock with a company that is how I read it uh, using the association name now if you look at uh, the links here this is the association this is the links uh, Association is actually a group of links. So this group of links is denoted using this association. Association is like a generic template, just like a class, right? And using that association or the generic template of the association, I can create multiple links between objects of these two classes, which are connected by the association, all right? So here, John owns stock with G company, Mary owns stock with G company, Sue owns stock with G company. Similarly, Sue owns stock with IBM company and Alice owns stock with IBM company. So you can see directly or specifying which object of one class is linked to or is connected to which objects of the other class. If you carefully observe, Sue owns stock in both the G company and the IBM company. John and Mary own stock only with the G company. Alice owns stock only with the IBM company and Jeff does not own stock in any of the companies. So I hope you have understood the concepts of links and associations, the difference between them and how to represent them in UML notation. Associations are read from left to right. So usually I read from here that is person owns stock with company. However, associations are also bidirectional. That is, they can be read from both ends. A person can own stock with a company. 
a company can sell stock or can have stock associated with multiple people. So we'll worry about these notations a little later, uh, not to think about it uh, as of now. I will cover what these notations mean here, the asterisk symbol, what they mean uh, in another lecture video.